What's up guys and welcome back to another video and to another episode of the F1 Road to Glory with Alfa Romeo and today we are back for episode number four for the Monaco Grand Prix and Canadian Grand Prix so uh, yeah we've got a couple of new parts fitted as you can see brilliant news we've got the chassis weight reduction um, and I genuinely can't remember I don't I don't think that was the one that failed or was it it might have been anyway I think it was, but uh, nonetheless, we've got two upgrades. We've also got a durability one on the way as well. So that's good news in time for Monaco. But uh, if you guys are new around here, do make sure to subscribe and also check out the other videos if you haven't already in this series. There is a link down in the description. And uh, yeah, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this series. And I will upload another one this weekend. We're trying to keep it going uh, for as long as possible. You know, these consistent uploads. And uh, yeah, really enjoying this series at the moment. And as I say, if you guys are to leave a like down below. And in the comment section down below, make sure to leave a few questions. Whether it be about this series, the F1 game in general, or just anything that you want to know. Because uh, in the next episode, I think I'm going to do it slightly differently. Um, maybe do a post commentary, maybe live commentary. But anyway, I'm going to be answering some questions of your guys nonetheless. So yeah, if you want me to answer one, do leave them down in the comment section down below. Without further ado, it's time to get into Monaco. Actually, just before we do get into the Monaco Grand Prix, I just wanted to take a look at the development tree. Uh, we're not really making big gains on McLaren, but I think we are slightly closing in on the midfield. So, uh, yeah, you can see there, we're just so far behind anyone else, which is uh, pretty tragic, it has to be said. But, uh, yeah, the results down at the bottom there, you can see 11th place in Russia is by far the highlight of the season so far. But, uh, yeah, Monaco's a chance. If we can qualify well, then it would obviously make a whole load of difference. But, uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. It's time for Monaco now. If there's one thing Formula One's most famous and challenging circuit probably didn't need, it was a damp and slippery track surface. Honestly, are we ever going to get a, just a, a good dry weekend at a track where it is possible for it to rain? It, it, we've got another wet weekend. As you can see, it's raining in practice. And then if we just skip forward there to the race... It's going to rain, uh, so I really don't hold much hope for this weekend, but uh, yeah, I guess we should probably do a bit of practice. Now, I would be lying to you if I said that uh, I had done any practice in the wet. I mean, I just don't need that sort of negativity in my life, to be honest. But uh, anyway, this is the final one, qualifying program. I, I, I don't even know. This car is just awful around this track. Just look at it. We're understeering. We're locking up. I feel like this is just going to be the story of the weekend. So that is probably the worst practice program we've had so far in this series. And uh, unfortunately, we had to actually give race strategy a miss. Not because we've run out of time, uh, but because our gearbox is about to give up on us. So uh, we'll just take a quick look and I'll show you guys exactly what is happening with the gearbox. But uh, we go to it there, you can see it is on 79%. And I've taken the decision that because we've obviously only done five of the six races so far, um, if we replace it now, we take a grid penalty which at Monaco is not going to be great, let's be honest. Um, and I do think this is a chance, if we can put in a decent qualifying, to actually score a good result. Um, so I decided we'll take the sacrifice, we'll just lose 50 resource points on that. And uh, yeah, because obviously the race strategy one will take at least three laps to do. Um, so yeah, I've sort of taken, taken a hit on that. Hopefully it will pay off. But uh, yeah, that is the practice program done. Uh, not the greatest in in terms of the other programs either, to be honest. So uh, we only got green for qualifying and also for tyre management. Uh, purple on the other two and also team objectives, we actually scored 30. Um, the informed strategy one we were never going to do anyway. But uh, yeah, not looking too great this weekend, not going to lie. Um, very much looking forward to Canada with the new gearbox. But we've got a soldier on. Now it's time for the most important lap of the year. Monaco qualifying. We're here in magical Monaco for this afternoon's qualifying session, which will be getting underway shortly. So in order to get anything from this qualifying session, we're going to have to go for something a little bit different. So you can see on the clock, we've still got 3 minutes 53 remaining. And I thought, you know what, this is probably a good time to go out and have a little bit of a clear track. So hopefully that uh, sort of pays dividends and we can actually put in a nice clean lap. Round the final corner. And wow, that was a... A difficult lap to complete, it has to be said, but ninth place. Ninth place, are you kidding me? What a lap. This might be our weekend. This could be the one at 12th place in qualifying. Our strategy worked. I just skipped to the end of qualifying and we've gone down a few positions, but not too many. That is brilliant news. 12th place we're going to be starting. 
full of clerks home grand prix at monaco that is fantastic we're actually a way behind uh, alonso so great result for him in the mclaren uh, but we just look at the names that are below us our teammate is just useless uh, Lance Stroll, pretty awful from him. Science 18th, okay, that was awful. Out qualified both the Hasses, one Toro Rosso, both of the Williams, one McLaren, and our teammate. That is brilliant news, but uh, anyway. First corner, you never know what could happen, especially if it is wet. Uh, I've gone for a dry setup because I was like, you know, it's only a five lap race, we just need grid position, but uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this now. This could be this could be the time. I believe we can get points. Hopefully you guys do too. But uh, yeah, now it's time for the Monaco Grand Prix. Oh man, it is raining. Okay, that's not great. But we pretty much expected that anyway. But uh, yeah, what can you do? We start in P12, so I can't complain too much. But uh, yeah, in terms of the setup, seeing as it is raining, it can't change the front wing because it's already at maximum downforce. Uh... Brake bias, we can move that slightly towards the rear so that we don't lock up at every single corner um, rather than every other corner, which was the case in qualifying. But uh, anyway, we'll go with that, I think. But yes, yeah, starting P12 for Leclerc's home Grand Prix, the Monaco Grand Prix, the crown jewel in the calendar, nonetheless. So now it is time to go into the Monaco Grand Prix. And well, I am looking forward to this sort of, but uh, yeah, we've just got to get a good start and maybe, just maybe, we'll get some points. It's lights out and away we go here in Monaco. Not the greatest of starts. That was wheel spin. Galore's Massa overtook us, but then we've just sort of gone past a couple of cars. No contact, please, Gasly. Please, mate. I think we've got past and we're up into 10. Don't know how that's happened, but there was no contact on my part apart from when Gasly tagged us. So we are up into the points for the second time this season of course we were in the points in russia of course but this is a lot more tentative we may go down the inside here oh my lord this the ai are going so slowly i'm sorry i'm so sorry so sorry perez but uh, i'll let him buy as alonso really mate really oh come on just get out of my way he's going so slowly the conditions around here are just treacherous, even though it's only intermediate conditions. It's just so difficult to feather the throttle as we may get on the inside of a lawn. So that was not a good idea. But he's just so slow, like even through the corners where you'd expect the McLaren to be slightly quick. He's just not. So we may be able to get up to ninth, but I do feel vulnerable still. On to lap three now. Obviously, there's going to be no DRS due to uh, the rainy conditions. But we... We're keeping pace with Alonso, and I think our gearbox is giving up. No, surely not. It's very laggy. Very laggy. You can hear me shifting now up into fifth. It's just not going. It's just not going. Surely we can't lose this now. Oh, this is going to be painful. Please shift. Just shift. No, it's not doing it. It's not doing it. Oh, no. This is just awful. This is awful. We're surely not going to get to the end of this Grand Prix now. Oh, this is just tragic. This really is. I have no idea when it's going to shift up or down or whether it even is. To be honest, we should be down in third. We're not. We're in fourth. I'll say that, to be honest. I mean, just shifting any sort of gear is looking like a, a bit of trouble at the moment. So, uh, oh, man, this is just going to be tragic. We're in a points position. But if we can keep it on the road, it would be a miracle. Never mind stay in a points position. No, Gasly's going past. Gasly is going past. And I'm not surprised, to be honest. We try and hang it around the outside, but we can't even we can't even shift down at all. And this is just going from bad to worse. Oh, no. Oh, of course. Now we've been overtaken. Our gearbox just resumes to normal. The, what is going on? Wow, this is just so annoying. Yep, literally, I think we're just cursed. I think we're just cursed. We just can't score points in this car. We're in 14th. We might as well see the Grand Prix out. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? The, the gearbox breaks again, but... Uh, oh, that is agonising. Ah, one thing I didn't notice was our, our M plate got completely taken off um, at that first corner. So now we don't have a front left M plate. To be honest, I think it, it would be beneficial to re retire the car if we didn't have just one lap left. So we might as well just carry on to the end and try and get as high position as possible with this... This is not going well. Understeer, much understeer. Our teammates there. We're not going to let him pass. Surely Ericsson can't get past. 
We, we, we can't let this happen to ourselves, and we don't, to be fair. We just about get it turned in. But he is going to be on our outside, and he collides with us. How rude. How rude of Ericsson. We literally have no turning circle. We got down to about 20 miles an hour there, I think. But uh, Ericsson is still on our inside. We should probably just let him go. This car is not in a fit state to be driven at the moment. Um, yeah, we, we can't even turn through the tunnel as DRS is enabled, but that doesn't matter because this race has just gone awfully, awfully. Here we go then, round the final corner in a race which promised so much that after that first corner, we were looking golden for points. And if our gearbox hadn't have given up, it may well have been points, but uh, what can you do? That is... That is stole destroying, it really is. 15th place behind the teammate. Oh god, that, that was that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. So it was a Ferrari win in the end for Sebastian Vettel, followed by Hamilton and Bottas, and then of course Raikkonen. It's really not difficult to follow what happens um, in those top eight positions. But uh, yeah, further down, there we are. It could have been so much better. There was a couple of penalties actually. Grosjean got one. That he, he might have been who collided with Hulkenberg at turn one, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, also Ricardo got a penalty, I believe, as well. But yeah, 15, not great. We we were a lot quick. Wait, our, our fastest lap was a 27-2. That is enough to obviously put us in the top 10. But it's like two seconds quicker than Ericsson. He started 19th, we started 12th, and he still overtook us. So that just shows how much pace we lost due to our gearbox. But I just can't wait to get a new gearbox in Canada. And uh, yeah, unfortunately not doing the race strategy didn't pay off, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, what can you do? Let's have a look at the constructors and drivers standings. Don't think anyone will have jumped above us. Yes, they have. Oh, of course, Alonso scored points. No, McLaren have scored points, which means Alfa Romeo are in fact the only team not to have scored points this season. That is disappointing. I know we're a long way off the midfield at the moment, but that was our chance. That was our chance to at least score one point. And, uh, but yeah, that's a little bit disappointing. But what can you do? We've just got to dust ourselves off and go to Canada. One of my favourite tracks on the calendar. And who knows, maybe we'll spring a surprise. Well, in better news, we've actually won our rivalry against Marcus Ericsson. Which uh, is sort of expected, seeing as we've pretty much outperformed him in every race. But uh, that means we'll have a new rival for next time. Don't really care about that, to be honest. Don't really know what it does. But, uh, yeah, I guess we'll take it. <laughs> Okay, it actually does do something. We are actually first driver as a result. So, I'll take that. I will take that. We are now the first driver at Sauber, which I believe gives us a little bonus on the R&D points as well. So, it says, uh, Dear Charles, Senior management have noticed your recent performance and decided to promote you to the team's first driver. You will receive an additional bonus after each race to reflect your added responsibility. So, yeah, I think that is an R&D bonus, like, as in we get extra points. So... That should be good. I'm looking forward to that, obviously, from the Canadian Grand Prix. So, it uh, should be a little bit easier now. Right then, welcome to the Canadian Grand Prix weekend. And as you can see on the screen, uh, well, actually, you won't you won't have seen, but Chris came up to us and said we're making good progress. And uh, to be honest, I can't really see what he's on about because we literally made no gains. Uh, we may have made gains on Haas and Toro Rosso, although Toro Rosso aren't even on the screen, but... Uh, I mean, that just shows how far away from the midfield we really are. I mean, McLaren have made very good progress, although it looks as if they've literally made the same progress as us, maybe a little bit more. But, uh, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll do what we can. We'll do what we can. And, uh, yeah, we've got enough points now to upgrade something else. So I'm actually going to go into the laptop and do that before we get into the racing for Canada. So let's go on to the upgrades. R&D tree, 1,000 points. Now, we are yet to do any aero upgrades, so uh, we're not too far behind Haas, so uh, should we go front wing or rear wing main plane? I think we'll go front wing to start with, makes sense, so uh, that should be with us by the end of next episode, 1,000 points on that, which leaves us with 84, a stunning 84 points, but uh, yeah, yeah, looking forward to getting that upgrade on us, because uh, we won't have anything, yeah, Austria is the next time we're actually going to have any upgrades, so uh, yeah. Without further ado, let's get in to the race weekend now for Canada. Here we are, live in Montreal at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, where the teams are making final preparations before today's practice session gets underway. So new gearbox has been fitted to the car, fortunately enough. That, that first one just got absolutely battered, 82%, no surprise. 
that uh, he gave up on us. But uh, yeah, time for practice now. Let's see what we can do. So on to the fuel saving program. And this one could be difficult because obviously, uh, notoriously, um, you know, Canada is a difficult trap for fuel saving. You know, we, we, we see, we've see we seen it over the years, you know, teams struggle. So uh, yeah, this, this could be one where we fall down, but it'll be interesting to see how we do. Oh, a nice bit of lift and coast down that back straight means we should be able to get purple if we just lift off at the end sure enough we do and that wasn't actually as difficult as I thought now fortunately enough around Canada you have literally every chicane to lift off so uh, yeah it wasn't actually that difficult <laughs> oh beautiful through that final corner now it hasn't taken me many laps even in this car to realize how much I do love Canada as a circuit I don't know whether it's just me or whether you guys are, uh, that are watching also love the Canada circuit let me know your thoughts on it down below or uh, I, I, yeah, I just can't put my finger on what it is because it's pretty much a chicane after chicane, but I don't know It's just a really satisfying circuit and obviously makes some some really good racing as well What an incredible session. We've only got five seconds to go but 275 out of 275 points I think speaks for itself and uh, We ended up in fifth place. I think we were the only ones to use the ultra soft tires uh, But yeah, we managed to get through the whole qualifying program uh, sorry, the whole practice program, including the qualifying pace, which is why we're up so high. But uh, I love this track. It's a great track to do after Monaco. After the disappointment that we had last time out, it is refreshing to see this. But uh, yeah, well, that is actually everything done. So uh, yeah, I guess it's time for qualifying. Aha, finally we have a new rival just before qualifying. It's going to be interesting to see who it is. I feel like it may be Fernando Alonso or maybe one of the Haas drivers. Uh, it is... Well, what a guess that was. Fernando Alonso it is indeed. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that's a reasonable target. Because uh, we should be out outperforming the McLaren. Like, now I've sort of got into the rhythm of what this car, this uh, Alfa Romeo, is all about. But, of course, we'll have to see. He's already scored points. But, uh, yeah, now it really is time for qualifying. Good afternoon, and we hope you're ready for an exciting qualifying session as the teams make their final preparations here in Canada. Here we go then, we have got, well, two laps if we need to, because obviously it's quite a short circuit, so we have enough fuel in the car to uh, to see us through. But we've sort of gone for the same as Monaco, not quite to the extent. Uh, we've left ourselves with a reasonable amount of time uh, to do two laps. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Coming down the back straight now, just the, uh, the final chicane to negotiate. Hopefully we won't go into the Wall of Champions. We don't. Pretty sure we cut the circuit there, but uh, we've got to do whatever we can in this car. And we go for the shortest route across the line. Ninth place, are you kidding me? Once again, we're up to ninth. I'm sure that will tumble, but I don't think we're improving that lap. Okay, a little bit disappointing. We're actually 14th in the end. And we finished behind Alonso, which is annoying. But uh, <laughs> you can see the discrepancy between Alonso and Van Dorn and Leclerc and Ericsson. So, uh yeah, it's pretty realistic in terms of uh, the leclerc Ericsson gap, I think. But uh, it's so difficult. Like, I haven't changed the AI setting at all for this race, for like these this this episode. And uh, we just seem to be qualifying higher. So uh, our new strategy seems to be working. Just going out a little bit earlier rather than right at the end of the session. But uh, yeah, we're definitely in with a chance. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a dry race. I think it's quite bad that uh, I actually have higher expectations for this race than I did at Monaco. <laughs> like, even though we were starting 12th in Monaco and 14th here, I have more, I feel like there's more chance of scoring points. A, because it's Canada and not Monaco, so I'm, I, I was going to say I'm not going to crash, but I probably will now. And also, it's sunny, it's not raining, and for only the third time, I believe, this season, we have a dry race, which is good. Very good. So now we go to the five red lights, for round number seven of the season, and away we go. It's a pretty good start, I think. Alonso is poor off the line. It's only a short run down into turn one. And Alonso has just squeezed us out, really. We get a warning for a collision, but I don't think there was too much in that. And in the end, we don't actually gain, uh, end up gaining a single position. Oh, Alonso does get a poor exit off there, though. Maybe, maybe down the inside of there. If we can hang it round the outside of here, that would be pretty special. But it does turn to the inside on the exit of the chicane. Alonso has the racing line, but uh, we haven't got fuel to burn. I was just about to say we do have fuel to burn, but uh, we're gonna just claim the apex there. Beautiful move up into P13. And uh, well, now we've just got to chase after Gasly. 
I think it's fair to say that we'll probably have more successful first laps in terms of positions gained, but we are definitely in a good position here to uh, at least, you know, have the chance to pick up some scraps for points. So uh, we'd have to, we'll have to overtake three more cars uh, in order for that to happen, but I'm pretty confident that we have the pace over Gasly here if we can just sort of keep onto his tail. So we'll stay on board for a little bit just to see uh, whether we can sort of gain at all. We don't hit that apex though, and it's this corner that completely messes me up every single lap. We just can't get a good exit off it. Every F1 game, like ever, it's just been the case. I don't know why. Oh my god, what is happening ahead? Okay, right, we are in DRS range of Gasly, but they are three abreast up ahead. We'll be ready to pick up the pieces if and when they collide, but uh, it's actually us that ended up colliding with Gasly. But uh, yeah. If they carry on scrapping ahead, we've still got a chance of points. There's two laps to go in this Grand Prix, and we are hanging on to the tail of the points. So we're possibly just going to dive it down the inside of Gasly here. Could work. There's contact. There's contact. Okay, right, I'll let him go. I'll let him go. That was my fault, and we've ended up losing a position to Stroll. Well, we had to go for it. And I think that is points out of the question now. Oh, going back up the inside of Stroll. He locks up. And thank you very much, Lance, for locking up, because uh, we'll take that. On to the back straight we go, and we've just fallen behind Gasly on this lap. I mean, we've been pushing hard, but uh, I think 13th is still pretty respectable. I mean, we've held off Stroll, as uh, Williams have had an awful, awful season so far. Uh, but not as bad as Alfa Romeo, not as bad as us. You've got to remember that. But uh, anyway, we come across the line for... Uh, Pretty disappointing episode, I think it's fair to say. Could have definitely got points, though. So, uh, we can be encouraged, but the more races that go on, the more I just want to get points. So, uh, I enjoyed those five laps. I enjoyed racing around Canada, but uh, realistically, we were never really going to get any points. So, 13th in the end isn't too bad, I guess. Uh, Ericsson, again, managed to get 15th. He, he, he starts last, like, every race. I don't know what he does in that first lap. But uh, he just seems to gain a load of positions. Poor result for Sainz and Kvyat. Also for my rival, Alonso. He was down in 17th, even though he started ahead of us in 12th. And, uh, yeah, if we look right up, it was another victory for Mercedes, unsurprisingly, around Canada. And uh, 3 and 4 for Ferrari. 4 and f uh, Sorry. 3, yeah. 3 and 4 for Ferrari. 5 and 6 for Red Bull. And uh, 7 and not 8 for Force India. Would you believe it? The, uh, the unpredictability is just increasing by the episode. But uh, yeah, going on to the uh, the championships, it's uh, Bottas now leading the way from Hamilton with Raikkonen dropping down to third. But uh, the real battle is down for 17th place, the ones who haven't scored points yet. So Lance Stroll's favourite track is coming up next, Baku. And um, then, uh, well, yeah, I, I don't think Baku should be too bad for us. But then again, we don't have a Mercedes engine, so it probably will be awful. Um, but uh, yeah, still, we're the only team not to have scored points. That is not a surprise, but uh, yeah. Not a great episode seeing as McLaren have scored points and we haven't. <laughs> wow, okay. So our first driver bonus is 23 resource points. Isn't that just brilliant? I mean, they say every little helps, so uh, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll take it, but I don't think it's going to get us a massive aero upgrade or anything like that. So that just about caps off episode number four of the F1 2017 Road to Glory. As always, leave a like down below if you did enjoy it. And also remember to comment down below your questions. But uh, I'm going to try and score points in the next episode. That is the aim. We've got to do it at some point this season. But uh, until, ne until my next video, guys, do take care. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.